first part of my talk, we dealt with the possibilities and potential of fisheries and aquaculture, especially for producing the food production of the country and again touching upon the possibilities of employment, etc. In the second part of my talk, I would like to connect with this uh, aquaculture and with the biotechnology uh, because aquaculture is increasingly becoming science driven and getting an exposure to this or this connection with aquaculture and biotechnology will give us an idea which are the area in future especially if you look at the uh, young professionals coming out of the uh, colleges and which are the career prospects, how you can become entrepreneurs and biotechnology being a, a new science, uh, how it is very closely related with the uh, uh, aquaculture. Application of biotechnologies are emerging as a supporting technology to augment the aquaculture production. Biotechnology is applied to the whole spectrum of aquaculture, for example, reproduction, larva rearing, nutrition, bioremediation, health management, post harvest processing and bioprospecting. In short, aquaculture is having a complete biotechnology you can say, every aspect of the aquaculture and even fisheries can be connected to the uh, biotechnological uh, applications and possibilities. If we look at the, in fisheries when you see the first thing we think about the species, species identification, species, species identification using classical methods we know, now molecular taxonomy has come. Now, molecular, tax, molecular taxonomy is a biotechnological tool. In the first place, it is becoming a complementary to the classical taxonomy. So, in the first species identification level itself, you can see that modern biotechnology applications. And for example, you would have heard about barcoding, DNA barcoding. It is essentially a species can be identified using a small piece of tissue and subjecting it to the molecular tools. Here you can see that suppose you wanted to uh, know, identify a fish or a species, you know, in the present day uh, there are a lot of protected species and people are, uh, you know, uh, going and uh, exploiting these fishes and you need uh, even the authorities want to know whether this species is uh, uh, in the market when the fish into the market, you may not be knowing what kind of a fish it is. If it is a, a protected fish in this, in this kind of uh, circumstances, uh, we are using molecular taxonomy even the barcoding. We can even to from a small piece of the uh, fish, we can subject to the different stages of these uh, uh, molecular methods and uh, with this uh, using you can see the cytochrome oxidase gene is there, CO1 gene and amplification we can within a matter of say one to uh, two hours we can able to identify the which species it's, it belongs. That means uh, it is uh, adding to the uh, classical taxonomy and uh, a new uh, possibilities being added and look at the case of the bacteria and even the microbes. There is again a 16 DNA technology. We can just take a small, we need not go to the uh, classical uh, methods, it is very time oriented, labor uh, oriented methodology. We can just take the uh, small sample, uh, take out the DNA and we can use this uh, 16 DNA tool to identify the species. So, uh, what we are seeing is that molecular biology techniques are uh, increasingly uh, started using to solve or to make our uh, task simple. Uh, and they, and this you can in, in the coming slides you can see it is just an example I said. In the early days of uh, uh, fish farming that means using the car farming in India, uh, there was no uh, production of the seed. So, uh, finding out the hormonal manipulation and induced breeding and, and producing the hatchery produced car seeds has revolutionized the Indian freshwater aquaculture whereby uh, the production has gone into many, many folders. That is one example. But again, when uh, uh, turned into uh, other sectors like brackish water, fin fish farming, shim farming, using this uh, uh, hormonal manipulation and reproduction and producing the young ones, the quality seeds in the hatchery. It, that means there are so many fishes and the shrimps they breed in the wild, but they, when, you, when you bring into the captivity they will not breed. Here we use induced breeding methods and different kind of hormonal manipulation, biological methods to make this mother fish or mother shrimp breed in the hatchery and make the quality seeds, the young ones what we required and so that we made them available to the farmers which seed they wanted to uh, use it. In both positive and negative phases, biotechnological innovations in the areas of induced breeding 
larval feeds, formative feeds and DNA based disease diagnosis help to fill the knowledge gaps to take the industry forward. If you look at the uh, aquaculture sector since 90s, you can see the success that means positive and failure. Success means uh, the shrimp farming is uh, uh, becoming a big success story, a sunrise industry. But at the same time, due to the emergence of certain disease, uh, uh, you know, uh, due to virus, etc., it has become a failure. You know, the whole crop failure has been happened. So, this both the aspects, whether in the success part as well as the failure part, the to tackle these uh, issues, we have used uh, molecular uh, methodology, biotechnological support uh, to solve the problem. Again, uh, I the last quarter I have mentioned that uh, if you talk about aquaculture. Aquaculture is a complete biotechnology topic because since from the species size as, as I said earlier that you can use it as a molecular taxonomy tools and species identification. Then now you have candidate species of uh, species of shrimps and fishes to breed you need to adopt uh, in a reproductive manipulation. Reproductive manipulation itself means high uh, level of science you should understand the species you have to manipulate the reproduction and again to use these techniques in our control. And this can be done in all kind of uh, uh, species what we are used in the uh, aquaculture and uh, at the success also uh, uh, take a clue from the after the carp you can take the brackish water fishes like in, uh, in uh, uh, sea bass, sea bass hatchery technology has been developed using induced breeding methods hormonal manipulation by CMO, uh, CBA. Then CMFRA has bred the cobia, pompano. Now recently Siba was able to breed the milk fish, it is a vegetarian fish. Here all we are using our knowledge what we uh, acquired from the biology, the understanding of the fishes and again uh, making it translated using the biotechnological methods. And once the uh, fish is bred in aquaculture there are the most important components are seed, feed, health and gen genomics. So in aquaculture. Uh, the compartments or the components which required to take it forward are seed that means hatchery produce seed, feed formulated feed, then health management to tackle the disease issues, then genetics for the stock improvement. So in all these uh, 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 component the driver is the new knowledge and technologies. So once you achieve this you can look at the, and the interestingly the present world is driven by economics means if any activity even the uh, it is not economically viable we cannot advocate the stakeholders even the farmers. But in the brackish water aquaculture or in the aquaculture as such you can see that benefits we may come once we standardize a hatchery produ production technology for a, a particular uh, a species which is a very potential farming. You look at the case of the uh, shrimp hatchery uh, just by a modest hatchery which can produce a million larvae it need it is only required 45 days they can generate almost uh, an income of 1 lakh per month. That means a 100 million hatchery that is the commercial hatcheries you can see that they are making a very impressive economic benefits in income. And here the driver is the technology where we were able to uh, develop a hatchery technology where we could able to breed the mother shrimp in the hatchery and to make it. Then comes the next level once the uh, shrimp is bred small larvae we need to make the ideal feed for it. When the larvae then then comes the live feed, live feed is again you have got very micro particulate uh, uh, diets and small micro organ live, live feed then formulated feeds then again grow out when you go to the, feed, uh, the farm you have again to tackle the disease you need to have a new health management tools and approaches. Again you can see that so in this uh, uh, value chain once, once the seed go to the uh, farm and make a successful harvester. Uh, in the case of the shrimp you can make about uh, you know something like a, a 3 lakh to 6 lakh net profit uh, in a matter of 120 days. When you compare it with other sector it is one of the most uh, economically benefited sector and when you for example when you wanted to manipulate uh, this about the biology where the connection is coming we wanted to breed the shrimp. But the shrimp will not breed in the uh, in, in the captive in the, in the hatchery. Then when in using the biology understandings and observations we were we, we were able to find out uh, the hormone controlling that means there is a hormone called uh, uh, growth inhibiting hormone in the shrimp. 
So in the wild, when ideal conditions comes, the growth inhibition is being uh, uh, taken away and the breed naturally in the wild. But when you bring into the hatchery, you need to make the shrimp breed and we found out that this particular uh, uh, organ producing gonad inhibiting hormone is situated in the eye stalk. So, uh, uh, the scientists when they are working and the researchers found out a very simple method that you can really cut and remove one eye stalk being an invertebrate it will not harmful the uh, shrimp it will not uh, any way affect the biological activity. So, it is only a small part of the invertebrate uh, since it is an uh, invertebrate loss but what happens the hormone titer reduces and the shrimp is pushed towards the maturation process and the shrimp become mature in the hatchery and uh, uh, they were able to breed in the hatchery and produce seed. So, such a small uh, technology and the, it is actually uh, economically there is no money involved at all. This kind of technology we were able to make it is through the biological understanding that means better understanding and uh, applying it it is called applied biology or you can even also call biotechnology. And uh, this kind of understanding and application has only created the sector like uh, uh, shrimp farming where I just told earlier when I started my talk, we are now earning around 30,000 crores of foreign exchange and we produced uh, the last year, it is almost now reaching a 1 million tons of farmed shrimp. And again you look at the possibility, you look at the table, see all almost all, all states except uh, some states like Andhra Pradesh, we have got uh, uh, enough uh, even the resources, water resources to use it and to produce more. And uh, uh, that means, uh, this technology when you are having this technology ready, uh, even the biotechnology tools, we can have a two level of expansion of the production that is one in horizontally by uh, using the uh, unutilized resources and again using the biotechnological uh, inputs such as feed and novel feed and produce more. And uh, when you have success, that is what I was telling about the negative, when the production gone up, you can see that uh, shrimp production from the 2000, uh, you know, 90s to 2010, uh, uh, it has gone to manifold. But not without any problem, you know that new problems like disease outbreak, uh, emergence were there, outbreaks were there, a single pathogen called a viral pathogen, a white spot virus could able to unseat the sustainability of the shrimp farming. So, then the challenges come, how to, how to tackle uh, this disease problem, this is the uh, disease I was telling, it is a one of the, it is not only in India, in across the world a new disease due to a viral pathogen could almost uh, 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 you know made the old shrimp farming the successful industry unsustainable. Then what is the way? You see the way uh, the disease has spread across the world. So again when you have uh, intensification or a growth trajectory, this kind of limiting especially in the biological uh, thing, whether it is agriculture, animal husbandry or in the fisheries, the disease is a major limiting problem. So, we need to have a more and more understanding about this, again it is uh, uh, it's coming, it has to come from the understanding or higher science in biology and biotechnology. And what happened then? See this in India, in uh, uh, since uh, uh, 2000 uh, you can say that first disease outbreak was in uh, 1995 in India in the shrimp, uh, white spot virus outbreak, almost all the crop uh, failure, repeated failure, farmers have stopped to stop the crop, even the uh, Marine uh, Products Expert Development Authority of India, uh, they declared a crop holiday in 1995. Then we understood that elsewhere in the, con in the, in the world, they have produced uh, a shrimp, a kind of, it is called an exotic vanami, it is an American shrimp, Penis vanami, through selective breeding. That means, use this process, they could able to uh, develop a fast growing shrimp as well as specific pathogen free. That means, this particular shrimp is free from all the uh, uh, disease causing organism and it is made available, it is uh, and finally, uh, these farmers has come forward and uh, they wanted to bring it to India and the Indian government supported and this species has been brought into uh, India and uh, it will be amazing to see that uh, uh, you know in the by this uh, this this time 90 percent of the Indian shrimp farming is using the uh, uh, this selective bred uh, uh, shrimp developed elsewhere in America and it has been introduced. So, you can see the power of uh, uh, you know science or the uh, uh, the futuristic way of approaching science and how you can translate uh, this into a practical that means applied aspects and make the uh, economic benefits. So, biotechnology being a multidisciplinary system requires the integration of scientific advances in biology, 
chemical science, material science and engineering. Hence, we could bring all the players in government and private sector under an umbrella or network of marine biotechnology to bring meaningful outcomes for the benefits of the state in areas of food production, value added products, creation of novel jobs, providing alternative livelihood. Okay, so, you could be able to see the uh, possibilities as well as the challenges in uh, when we are talking about the uh, uh, bringing the uh, uh, fish production up or maybe the aquaculture and again the role played by the biotechnology. And you can see the challenges and issues, uh, you know species diversity, broodstock development, quality seed, feed, disease, genetic improvement, production system and markets. So, this touch upon the most of the uh, uh, you know uh, important aspects of the biology I was mentioning and again it is intrinsically linked to the aquaculture. Uh, with this I am ending this second quarter and uh, more will be coming in the third quarter.